I like it. Right. So we're just waiting uh, until this has obviously gone live, and then we're going to be happy. But yeah, hello everybody. Welcome in. We're going to be playing No Loss Daniel. So the rules are simple. Uh, any loss, no matter what it is, either garrison, land battle, anything, uh, anything that is considered a loss within the statistics in the game is the end of the campaign. And so I just want to say welcome everybody in. How everyone's having a fantastic weekend so far. And thank you very much for being here. And much love to you guys. Freedom. So one thing that we need to make sure we do, uh, as part of an epic campaign, we're going to need an epic name. So folks, I'm open to suggestions regarding the naming convention of the person we're going to be playing today, or Daniel, that we have in front of us. Any ideas? Did I lose all the hair last time you died? I did indeed. But the good thing about uh, shaving my head is I have no hair to shave now. Apart from my beard, which I'm not doing that. As I look legitimately 12 when I shave my beard. And uh, my girlfriend calls me babyface. And it's not fun. The Overlord. I don't want to go full egg. The only time I will ever go full egg is for a charity stream like Lionheart did. That's the only time I'll ever do it. Also, look at this big old water bottle. Right, so we need naming suggestions. Dome Crusher. Okay, so that's one of the naming suggestions we've got here. Guys, any names you guys want to see? And hey, mummy, good to see you. I just realized my mummy's, my mummy's put a message in there. I'm go gorgeous inside and out. Anyone disagrees, they'll have to answer to. They'll have you to answer to. In fairness, my mum will beat you up, so be careful. Hey, something, something. Ad Hill, you want Bob Trogdor? Okay. There's some eyebrows to burn. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, I won't work. Flamion, interesting. Alwa, listen. Hey, Robert. The Burninator. I look like 12 with a beard. Okay, 15, I'll give you that. Honestly, I feel like ever since I've started shaving my head, if I ever go into like a restaurant or try and buy alcohol and they ask for ID, I'll just take my hat off or something like that and be like, yep, there's the dome. Do you know what I mean? Uh, no losses, let us pray. The four gods for victory, Elias. Indeed. My mum does kick ass, she does. My mum's a legend, and happy uh, happy Mother Day again, mummy. Love you lots. Um, mummy's boy, absolutely. I was raised by my mum. I am indeed a mummy's boy. Hey, Cla uh, fried egg. Good luck with this one. Yeah. Ofsky, mum, lo much love. Take care of yourself. Should we go with Norman, then? <laughs> right, guys, type one in the chat if you're happy with Norman. Are we happy with Normie? What, we're going to do Normie Norman? <laughs> what would you do? Normie... Not happy with the tarot though? What we have in Norman. Naughty Norbert. I actually like the name Naughty Norbert. So if you guys don't know me, uh, I used to call every character that I ever did on Bannerlord Naughty Norbert and I would play as an Irishman alongside it. He was like part Irish, part Scotchman. And I was like, cheeky chappy here. So it was, a, so it was Naughty Norbert. There was a little cheeky chappy. So we'll do Naughty Norbert. And then we're going to go with Legendary Very Hard as always. Uh, we can put the crisis up, but I don't really... Crisis, I think, ruins it a little bit. Uh... Oh, yeah, you're right. Norbert. Thank you. I was in good spot, good spot. Also, the pup wants to say hello. Come here, Oh! Pup has indeed come to say hello. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going naughty, Norbert. Right. So, I mean, it's one of those things where we might have to start quite a lot, or restart quite a lot, but you got to keep in mind there's going to be a lot of RNG. Fark, should we be named Placer? There's actually a, a streamer that I know called Fark. He's a really nice guy. Really nice guy. What we'll do is we'll rename him if necessary, right? So if we feel like we need on the next run, we'll rename him. Plus, you can rename him in-game, right? You can rename in game if I'm not mistaken. Like, if I'm not mistaken, guys, you can rename him at any point, right? <laughs> What's starting hero you're going to game for? Uh, starting hero is going to be the blood letter for the movement. Uh, we're going to go corn still. Uh, play it similarly to how we normally do, but we're going to have to transition towards getting, um, getting the uh, Nurgle Plague hero as soon as possible. Because the one worry about uh, the early stages of the game when it comes to having a a lord is 
you can be ambushed, right? Teleport ambushes are, uh, are real, so we'll see. But yeah, the, 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 basically the main goal is to maximize my movement speed as much as possible in the early game. And uh, you get like 10% off the rack and then 15 with a level. So level two, you get a uh, level two blood leather gives you a 15% movement. And then like turn eight, turn nine, you'll get access to another 5%. Uh, and then obviously you got Ramp Marcher as well. Yeah, you got a lot. Mm -mm. Those are bald and beard guy. Nice. Yeah. This one, so... The annoying thing about early game is a lot of your units aren't part of the same dedication, which makes it so you'll be spending a crazy amount of money. So there is a cheese you can do, which is basically you put all your units inside of here or wherever you can hide them. And then they'll deploy everything over that side because you got to keep in mind the towers themselves are crazy strong. Look at this. 500. It's actually bonkers. Crazy levels of strength. Uh, but in fairness... I don't think we need to do it to, be, to I don't think we need to necessarily do it. Uh, just move these guys a little bit further back. And let's get over here. How's work going? Um, yeah, work's going all right. Thanks, you, Lane. It's very tiring. So if you guys don't know, I've started a full-time job. It's the reason why I haven't streamed in five, six days. Uh, and I'm just trying to get used to it again. Oh my goodness, that shot did a lot of damage. I think I got double hit by the magic tower. So yeah, we are pretty damn squishy. Oh my god, it hit me again. God, these towers are insane. These towers are insane. What job did I take on? I'm a cloud center of excellence product owner. That is my job. It's good. I'm enjoying it. But yeah, we're going to be going for the blood ladder, I think. I mean, a lot of what we're going to have to do, we're going to be very, we're going to have to be smart with how we approach things because it's good. It, very quickly this can turn bad. Very quickly. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, no worries, man. Oh, what now? Yeah. <laughs> Cloud center of excellence. Basically, a, a cloud center of excellence is fundamentally um, uh, people within an organization that ensure that their cloud-related technologies are the best it can be. Also, look at these. Look at the insane amount of knockoffs we can get. And these are the reasons why plague drones are so good. I don't think they get. I don't think you actually get credited for the ones you knock off. Like this, for example, not getting credited. All those not getting credited. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You don't get credited for them. But I ain't, I'm, I'm, I ain't too bothered. I ain't too bothered because it should be pretty free for us to continuously knock them off. Because you can just see... Ooh, this, this lad's up there. Yeah, just look at how many have been knocked off. This is the reason why it's kind of insane. And the reason why Plague Drones of Nurgle are so incredibly good. Just consistent value. Your recent Daniel focused and playing the intro campaign really opened my mind towards him. You want a low-key player? Olaf, do it, matey. Daniel's a lot, a lot better than people give him credit for. I truly believe this in my heart to heart that nobody played Daniel enough um, with the recent changes to him, right? With all the recent things that have happened. I think the stigma around Daniel in general has always been when he was released. Daniel was a garbage on release. I'll admit that. Daniel, Daniel was one of the worst Legend Lords on the release because his roster was terrible. Just didn't do anything good. Also, this is disgusting how easy this is. These are the three plague bearers. The tower is going to disappear. And then now we can move up. Look how disgusting that is. That's three plague bearer units. We haven't lost a single plague drone either, by the way. You can't tell me that's not gross. That is actually grotesque how good that is. Absolutely insane. And then the good news is they can't climb the walls, the man. None of their units remaining can climb the walls. So we can just take it as slow as we need to. We can take it as slow as we need to. I mean, if I really wanted to try hard, I could swoop in, continuously swoop in here. Uh, but this probably the smartest thing for me to do is just to uh, go ahead and use my units to get through the door. Okay, so this look classic. El Clasico, my friends. El Clasico. Uh, Budler's on the wall. Like we said, they can't get on the wall physically, so we're fine. Uh, would you give to Dandy Boy to improve him? He needs a tech tree. Uh, someone actually commented on my YouTube stream and suggested something along the lines of uh, giving him tech tree depending on who you're dedicating towards and I thought that was a great idea. So you unlock, just like your items, you unlock tech tree as well, uh, which can also provide you some, rele uh, you know, some relevant uh, benefits towards it as, uh, at the same time. I think that to me makes a lot of sense, right? 
Because right now it's quite bland in that you're only getting armor. You know? It's like, so what? I'm getting armor. Most of the time it doesn't do anything. Right? And so I think Tech Tree can really, really start to put a lot more of a consistent experience with him. And that's what I would look that's what I would look to see. I think the problem that we often have uh, with Daniel at the moment is his inconsistency. Right? If I go um, you know, any variant of a uh, demonic god, I will always have that level of inconsistency because I'm going to struggle recruiting things. I'm going to have a hard time getting things because it's very open-ended. By having it tailored towards something like tech trees, you then break down the barriers of what can add those confusion towards it. It's like, oh, if I go into, you know, XYZ, oh, it, it unlocks the tech tree for that. And then it gives the player a better understanding of, oh, if I go down Zinch, I can then unlock xyz you know so I, I i quite like the idea of it hey james how's a new job so far so good matey been there for a week and the guy who wants to get everything and those factions lock you into one or one to five options i mean norska locks you into one option per legendary lord right i mean wolfric has to recruit mammoths uh throg has to recruit trolls and there's no variant to it i think norska are one of the few factions uh that has come through into warhammer 3 uh, that basically is worse off than when they were in Warhammer 2 and Warhammer 1. Which is crazy to me. Absolutely crazy to me that factions... Because everything else has had a really good time with it. Also, I mean, if I carried on like this, right, I could win without taking casualties. But for the sake of actually making content, I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to make it... I just wanted to demonstrate that this is possible, right? Always good to demonstrate uh, things that are possible. As... I'm trying to be educational as, as possible here at the same time. Uh, I definitely should have removed play drones out here. Should be fine for now. Because their HP per entity, they're at the point now where they'll take damage. Like, actual unit HP. The Emperor, the Emperor is in this category true? I disagree. I disagree only because of the fact that... Um, the Empire fundamentally has always been strong and is always strong. Just because you've got a lot of our enemies doesn't fundamentally change the, 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 the value of the faction, right? Uh, I don't think it doesn't... In my eyes, it doesn't change the value definition of the faction, right? The value propositions of Norska has drastically changed, right? Um, you're no longer a powerhouse because the map's too big. That's not dependent on the faction or what they can recruit. That's dependent on the fact that the map is too big for them. You know, in Warhammer 1, Norska was one of the one of the strongest factions. Uh, yeah, easily, Norska was one of the, the strongest faction. Um, Warhammer 2, you bring it in, the map starts opening up a little bit. Their victory conditions are pretty trash. Everyone starts getting a bit of power creep. Yeah, similar thing. I think Nor Empire is a very strong faction. Obviously, you know, if you compare them to the newer related factions, then it's a little bit different. Have I seen Dune 2 yet? I haven't, but I intend on seeing it next week. Uh, how did the Godslayer end up as Daniel? I mean, they should have known something like that would happen. Uh, well, it was Yuri, wasn't it? Uh, so what we're going to be doing, we're going to, uh, into Corn Dedication. And we want to go into growth. I'm pretty happy with the very minimal casualties there. Oh no, we'll go into Fury of the Faith and go into here. If you don't have the DLC, right? I am only doing this because I have Champions of Chaos DLC. If you don't have Champions of Chaos, do not go corn. 100%. I think if you don't, if you go into corn, it's pretty trash. I have to recruit a um, a Nurgle Mage now. And we'll go with Confident, because that that leadership actually will help a lot. This looks troll, but I really want to get rid of the Seekers now. And the Demonettes. Do I get rid of the Seekers and the Demonettes now? The Seekers can do so much work. But a lot, most of the fights that I'll be doing are... Um, are... Uh, you know... I'm fighting them on land battles. At, at the point where I start attacking these guys, they sit inside their capital, so I'm expecting to... Um, T hopefully recruit and snowball fast enough to get them. Let me check the units in here. Honestly, if I'm not mistaken, do I think one lord could take out this settlement? I haven't tested it, so I won't do it. But I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. It's just I'm losing so much money. Like, this is 460 a turn. Basically, are we saying that... This unit will do twice as much as a Marauder uh, of Corn. Honestly, probably. 
Honestly, probably, yeah. Demonettes, definitely not. So, demonettes are going. Demonettes suck. Uh, strikes back. Two towers, level of epic. Ooh, nice, man. Never played a single turn as Empire. James, highly recommend playing the Empire as soon as Throne Decay come out. Dowie as well. No, Dowie is so strong. Do not shame your ancestors, Dowie brethren. No, the dwarves are still strong. I honestly think the dwarves have an extremely powerful roster. I don't think they're in a bad spot. I think one of the biggest problems the dwarves have is that they are goddamn boring most of the time. Hey, Bold King. They're, they're boring, I'll be honest. I ma I have main dwarves since Warhammer 1, and dwarves are boring. Their playstyle is boring in comparison to most factions. They're outdated for the most part, but they are strong. Although they are outdated, they're a very strong faction. Uh, if I move up to here... I'm very intrigued to see the behavior here. I've actually not tested this myself. You can't attack my settlement, I'm pretty sure of that. How far can you reach? You can get there as well. Can you get there too? What's the odds of this guy? If I run past him, what's the odds of them going towards here? Normally you uh, you ambush this, right? Normally I sit here and ambush and bait him in to fight me. But I'm just starting to think that I wouldn't be surprised if, if I just force march here, right? I mean, put both my guys here. If he attacks the forest to decay, he's lost. There's no way he defeats this, even with a garrison like this. Like, not even kidding. The towers in the forest of decay are, are insane. So my assumption here is, if now I've forced match towards the settlement here, there's one of two things he can do. He can either try and go towards this settlement, or he'll try and move back to the Tower of the Flies. If he goes back to the Tower of Flies, that's the big dub for me, because I can attack it because I've forced marched. We have delayed our recruitment a little bit. The good news is um, everything else is okay. I'm happy with everything else. Um, yeah, I'm intrigued to see. I'm intrigued to see the behavior here because I've actually not tried this. But it's literally just come to my mind now that if I just ignore him, not ambush, I can stop myself because I technically will be a turn faster. Ooh, also, I have to go remember to do this. Got to remember to do this. Broken wheel, declare war, do that. Declare war, non-aggression with malice. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, you have to do that. You honestly have to do that. Um, we're going to then take this next turn, recruit twice, take that one, recruit twice again. Pulls up to 17 units, then I could force match uh, and then get ambushed by these guys with teleport stands. Because I'm technically going to be one turn ahead. My only worry is if this guy goes towards the left and, and tries to set up in here. But that should be fine because eventually Malice will try and take him out. I'm really curious to the behavior here, actually. I'm actually generally curious as to the behavior... My assumption would be they'd go to the right. They'd go back to the Tower of Flies because it's the only thing that logically makes sense in the position that they're in. Uh, but we'll see. Mm -mm. Vampire Coast or Counts? Which one? Outdated. That's a grudging. It is a grudging. What do you think of your success? Odds of success here, Dominus? I would say relatively high. Damn it, I didn't check. Crap, I didn't check where he went. Did he go left or right? Did the guy go left or right, guys? He went left, didn't he? He went to the left, didn't he? Did he go left or right? Does anybody see which direction he went? I legit did not pay attention. I stopped. I was reading, reading chat. Did this guy here go left or right? And counts? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of counts. He went both ways, girls. Okay, that helps. I was expecting something like that. Dwarves are not down to the traditional. I mean, the dwarves are very similar to, like, historical factions. I was on skips, it happened instantly. Right, okay, I'll do that one. Alright, we'll just take this element then. Malice will eventually attack him anyway. And he's not going to be able to take, a, take down a garrison that's really strong. We'll see if he goes in here. Mm -mm. Rob master from settlement trading and fill authority and say how much you can make with that. Yeah, but I think... Um, Imperial Authority as a mechanic functioned well in Warhammer 1 and 2 because there weren't a lot of threats in the Empire. Uh, Ogres have not only the strongest but also the most fun unit roster. 
I mean, you could debatable regarding strongest, but they are really good. Hey, Elite Nomon, thanks for following. And Razzle, thanks for the research. Will man. glass coffins be popular? Remains to be seen. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. He's coming with the jokes already. Love to see that. Right here, I think my my best assumption is he went to the, towards the left. So this is fundamental. This is actually interesting. That this is the first time that I'm trying to utilize uh, seekers in the campaign because I want to know if it's going to be worthwhile. Because I'm basically saying that this unit is worth twice the uh, Marauder Corns. But we'll see. But yeah, no, I think Ogres definitely do have a strong roster. It's just the unfortunate thing is they performed way too good in Warhammer 3 uh, release. They performed way too good in Warhammer 3 release. Um, so pretty much everything that was good about the Ogres was nerfed. So um, Gorges, generally, I think pre-nerf had about 67% more damage. They nerfed their damage by about 67%. I'm not even kidding. It was ridiculous how hard they nerfed them. Ogres were too good. Yeah, they were the strongest faction in the game. On Warhammer 3 release by a long way. By a long, long way, they were the strongest faction in the game. It wasn't even remotely close. Eh, Zinch was good, but... No, Zinch was very strong. But Ogres were just crazy. Like, the uh, Iron Blasters were, like, pinpoint accurate from across the map. And they would one-shot um, single entities as well. It was kind of mental. Could they just go west and recruit just past the bridge? I think they must have gone west... I was more so interested to see the behavior. I'm not too bothered about them being in that settlement because they can't then do much. There's not a lot, an awful lot they can do to stop me now. And from a understanding, you know, my victory conditions here, I'm just going to utilize this Nage. I want to, I want to level this guy up as quick as possible. Because you've got to keep in mind, if you have a Lord hero with your army, you can actually get glory points from them, which is one of the biggest factors as to why the mages aren't as strong, right? Having the hero mages, it's never going to be as strong because of the fact that you don't get uh, glory points from them. Which is the only weakness from it, really. Like, I'm all for having a Nurgle mage hero. Super strong, but it doesn't give you glory points. So Daniel and all this dude is going to give us glory points. And we're going to start transitioning towards more of a corn-centric army. I was going to test Celeste to see how bad it was, but... Um, it would be honestly terrible. I, 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 I am very much convinced that by playing Sonesh Dedication, I would probably lose my mind. I don't, I, I don't want to do that today. Mm -mm. But spells cast by the Lord uh, count. Yeah, so any Lord that's in your army, it counts. Any Lord in your army. You can have four, up to four Lords in your army doing it. So obviously I've got Daniel and then this and then my this guy. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that whoever uh, is the first lord to be attacked or to attack it means any of the lords in there. It's really nice, which is the reason why having a lord in your army, especially a mage, super useful. See, I'm not too sure about the seekers here. I'm 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 debating still. I'm debating if I'm going to keep them or not. We'll see. I definitely think they'll be very 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 goddamn useful overall though. Hey, the Ashen. Uh, did, uh, did Daniel become getter? The only thing I remember is level twenty law recruitment at the line. Did that something new to Daniel? You can get the new uh, throw shadows of change units without glory requirements. So they're pretty. It's pretty good. Like getting change ring is basically for free. Chaos Dwarf Artillery, forgot the specific name, is insane. The Dreadquakes, yeah, they nerfed them quite hard, though. They nerfed them pretty heavily. Go for Sonesh and Nurgle once a respective DLC releases. Paradox, yeah, I would imagine it would be uh, a very good idea. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, the Earthquake changes they did, they make the faction feel really powerful. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, let's go Corn because it's the best garrison. And then since now, I'm not 100% certain where that guy is. I'm going to throw in the public order building, which gives me two units. Excuse me, three units. That'll be very, very strong. It's a shame we didn't level up, but that's okay. Just got two levels here. So I go double into Unholy Troopers of Terror. Mm -hmm. And then we go Marauder Corn. Uh, let me check something. 150, 150. Yeah, we should be fine. 
This is the reason why the Seekers are just screws in a little bit. But like I said, there's no way they can take this. They could try, but there's not a chance in hell they'll be able to get it. We really need to start getting towards Gore Feast, which is 330. Once we get that, I'll be a lot more confident with them. Although it's really annoying, it bugs on walls. We've learned it bugs on walls. Uh, it doesn't properly heal you on a wall, which is silly. Um, when see will add something to Norska. I uh, if if you're my true honest answer, I'm gonna have a I have a hard time believing they're gonna add anything to Norska for a long time, because the only thing that they'll the only decisions that they need to make is that the a the game is in the best state it can be, b it's gonna make them money, and c it makes sense for the community and that's the, something that people will want, right? And I think, you know. A lot of the time, things for like Norska specifically are quite survivor biased. I, I don't think there's a lot of people that play Norska, typically speaking, right? Uh, and so I, I have a hard time believing they'll do anything for Norska because it just won't make money in comparison to everything else. You know, they'll they'd be better off just making something new or update the, the you know the factions that are actually really popular. For example, you know, the Thrones of Decay is a good example of it. You know, really, really good example of it. Right. So that plague is actually super useful. Military presence of seven, so there's an army of seven in there. That's fine. Um, and then we can go and attack this again. This now has a relatively good garrison that they'd struggle to defend. Uh, I think we'll have to be a little bit cautious. So I'm going to declare war on you now. Just making sure I'm doing all the right pathing. Just if the Kugath Levy? Kugath is the strongest legendary lord in the game. By a long way. Maybe that's just me, but Kugath is the strongest legendary lord in my eyes in the game. Arguably by a long, long way as well. Hey, Hunnick. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, Lux. Good to see you. Uh, but do you probably not play Norska because it's not updated? It's a very valid point, honestly. Very valid point. And... To that, I'd probably say, yeah. Yeah, valid point. But then again, it's a bit of a risk to see if it'd actually be uh, something people will want, right? Was better than Grandpa? Nah. Fessus can't, like, solo armies quite like he can. I need to try and get some situations regarding diplomacy. It really sucks how little options you have diplomacy-wise early game. Now, what I'm thinking about doing... Lunch Presence is 7. I think if I respec this guy now, 286... Because I need to recruit two units, but I can't afford it. Let us not allow haste or rage to dictate business. This is tough. Uh, because I need to do this correctly. Because he's sitting in here. He always sits inside the crystal spires. I can only recruit once. So... We oh, look at Makes me think I'm probably better off just waiting a turn then. I'm actually going to get rid of this guy now. He'll be back in three turns. That's fine. By the time he comes over this direction, I think it'll be about three turns. The Forest of Decay is going to be fine. Because uh, the towers are incredible in it. We'll see. Join someone's distant war. I There's nobody that I can try. It's normally what I look for, but there's legit no one I can do that with. Unfortunately. Um... We're going to probably put the pinks in, and then I'm going to force march myself into a situation where these guys can ambush me. Uh, which sounds silly, but it's going to be the best thing to do. I am certain of it. Yeah, it sounds really dumb and a terrible idea, but I know as a fact it's going to be the smartest thing to do. They're going to ambush me, but that's what I want. This also sounds really dumb. He's going to probably come about here. I'm hoping, because there is a little bit of RNG that might happen here. There's a slight amount of RNG. He'll come out of here into, and then potentially move around this area. He could go down, right? There's a chance he goes down. Uh, I'm actually going to delay my recruitment to get the pinks. Because another pink here would be huge. Plus, um, the inventory is not worth it just yet until I can get more reductions. I need to level up another couple times. I need two more levels until I can reduce corn units by 15%. What I need to try and learn better as well as to how you should then level up these. Like, how you should level up the glory gains. Contact with the Norsecub? Apparently not. 
Paradox is a good question. You only get um, contact with them if you take the port. If you went with the settlement to the left first, you, you would then get contact. Um, which actually might be a really good idea. In hindsight, I'm going to take a note of that. I'm going to take a note of that, actually. Take the port first. Due to making money through war decks. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think that's probably from a guide perspective that makes the most sense to do. So he is in here, military presence of 10, which means there's an army of 20 sitting in here. Which means my dumb dumb self is going to move over here. I really want to know if he's here. He is here. No, he doesn't have enough reserves, man. Dude, he has no reserves to do this. That's so bad for me. If he just attacks me, that's fine. My whole point here is... Why did they not have it? He doesn't have the reserves to do it. Let me just make sure that we actually have... Do we have enough grades? No, we don't. Yeah, this has delayed me quite heavily, actually. You still in here? Yeah. Yeah, that's delayed me quite a lot, actually. Not fighting this guy. I think ambushing him is the, uh, ambushes the play. Ambush the army here. Take the Towers of Flies. But then again, getting diplomacy here is so huge. Building relations with Throg as fast as possible. Hey, Singular. Makes the most sense, honestly. So we've got the non-aggression with you still. Only issue is once we take this settlement, we'll have to fight uh, Boris pretty soon after. Um, this is a good upgrade because you get Chaos Warriors, but I can't afford Chaos Warriors yet. The whole point of what we've done here is to force this army to come and attack us. Uh, we saw he'll have 25 wins of magic, which is fine. Oh my god, he did it! What a dumbass! Oh my god, he's so stupid! So we know it's an army of 20 out of 20, but to teleport... Oh my god, we've lost physical resistance ourselves. Oops. But to him teleporting here means that he has no wins of magic for the fight, right? So this guy can't cast a damn thing. So we should be able to beat him up quite easily. And most of them will be blues. So I shouldn't be... Need I, I don't need to be too worried about that. You didn't know start very well. Yeah, I've played a lot of Daniel in recent times. Played a lot of Daniel in recent times. But yeah, Festus, the only reason Festus was better, for, like, briefly... Oh, crap, there's another army. Uh, the only reason Festus was really good at it briefly was just due to the fact that um, his damage and healing was higher with his AoE. They nerfed it, though. They halved it. I think after taking this, there's actually pause for me to go towards the port of the settlement here. So, my army's not actually in a lot of trouble. Because the way that they'll deploy here is they'll probably be over this side, on that direction. And there may be some units on the left, but I actually have my Bloodlords at the front, which is nice. Hey, Hash. Having the Bloodlords at the front makes a lot of... It was actually really good for me. And the second that I can... Wait, they have magic? How is that possible? He ambushed me. Yeah, I'm actually not sure how he's got uh, wins of magics. Oh my god, this is so bad. Losing the plague drones here is terrible. And losing the seekers is really bad too. Mate, how has he got magic? He ambushed me, and he still has magic. How does that make any sense? Actually, how does that make any sense? Oh my god, he's got an army of furies as well. This is I actually might lose this fight. I'm not going to lie. I don't, think I, can, I don't think I can beat this guy in a fight now. It doesn't cost wins to... Uh, it does. It, it costs 40 wins of magic to cast... Um, ambush. But clearly not for the AI, it seems. Okay, this is... I've already lost. That's kind of funny. That is kind of ironic that I've already lost. I didn't expect... How the hell can they do wins of magics? How did they get any wins of magics, guys? He had thirty. He had uh, thirty-five. I'm so. I'm actually so confused. He had thirty-five wins of magics, and you're telling me that this guy has all these spells and can ambush. I'm. I'm confused. 
I am generally confused there. He shouldn't be able to cast magic, but hey, you know, sometimes we learn. Sometimes we do the living, we do the learning. AI cheaters? Yeah, I don't think they cheat this hard. I expected the AI to cheat, but not this hard, honestly. I just don't understand how he's able to cast. Because if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to have to check this. Was it a teleport ambush? Yeah, it costs 40 wins of magic, so. It costs 40 wins of magic to, ca to do it. I'm going to check. I have to check this. I'm going to have to restart, but I'm going to try going the port side because I think that's smarter anyway. I, I generally think going the port smarter. Yeah, they shouldn't be... They should. We checked the Winds of Magic. I'm certain it was 40. All right, guys, we need a new name. I have to check that. That's ridiculous. I mean, guys, if I'm not wrong, you, you need 40 Winds of Magic to teleport ambush. That's why I was, like, confident that I could force match. Plus, the Furies absolutely obliterated me. That's why I don't think Seekers are very good. They're just so squishy. Look at this. Look, I'll show you guys. Look, let me load. Uh, what's the campaign that I have? Zinch Dedication. It was the first one I did, so it'll be this one. Double Tation is 25. It's 40, I'm sure of it. If, even if it was 25, Niski, he'd have had no casts, and he did three, which were brutal casts as well. Like, he did three really strong casts into my army, too. I'm loading in this campaign just to check. Because I'm certain it's 40. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do another campaign. We'll need it. We'll need suggestions. They can open with any skill. Not if they don't have Winds of Magic. I'm pretty sure this campaign has... Um, um, teleport stance. Or it should do, anyway. Let me check where Daniel is. I just need to... For my own sanity there. Yeah, 40 magics to reserves to move. Yeah, look at that. Winds of magics, power reserve to move, 40. How the hell did you do it? That's why I was confused. That's why I was hella confused. Okay. Well, skill issue to VH, yep, clearly. It was just a massive skill issue. I was gapped hard. I think I didn't realize they could do it for free, honestly. I didn't realize they could do it for free. I'm going to call him Dan, like and subscribe. So, let's do very hard as always. Calling Daniel, like and subscribe. You already know. Remember to like and subscribe. Um. Maybe they get it cheaper. Even if they got it cheaper, you wouldn't... Like, as a discount, they had 25 reserves. So there, there must be some weird thing with with the way Legendary AI does teleport stands. There must be something really weird. Well, I've learned something new, though. I have learned something new. I'm actually going to go to the port side. We're going to take the port settlement first. Yeah, thankfully we can do this again. Right, we've learned something new. And Hunnic, there's no mods, matey. No mods. Who am I devoting to? Corn. Well, devoting to Undivided, but we're going to be going into Corn for the most part for the glory. Once we've gotten Bloodletting, we'll go into Nurgle. Did some more on village from the empire and he revealed my province and did the wind sap on me. Nice. Devoting to corn. How many guys in the chat like corn on the cob? I love the corn on the cobs. Is it? I know in America, isn't like cornmeal or something like that? Like a like an actual thing. Like y'all, um, you eat like just corn in a tub, basically, like butter and all sorts. I can't even remember what else it's with. Corn is yummy. Corn is yummy. Can corn in a tub? Yeah, like, um, y'all do stuff with it. Like, cheesy, put it in short, like, make it cheesy and stuff. Wait, why the hell are they not in the towers this time? Can they even reach? No, I can't. Let's find them. 
grilled corn with butter. No, it's not like corn on the cob with butter. I feel like there's a different way that Americans serve corn. Creamed corn. That's it. I think it's creamed corn. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Harsh. I think it's creamed corn is what I'm on about. I thought it was hella interesting. Because it's such a different way of making it. You've never had it? Really? I swear, like, creamed corn was quite popular. Like, it was a very, like, an almost a standard. Maybe his interest of faction just get cheaper, so I can think about it. Yeah, I'll have to check. I'll have to check. One thing I would look, I should have checked on the previous save was um, whether or not they still have Winds of Magic at the end of it. I'll have to check if they, got, they had Winds of Magic at the end of that. Uh, and then I'll be able to fully understand what happened there. Man, Plague Drones are so nutty when it comes to just kicking units off. It's very difficult to hit um, Plague Drones normally. To no one's surprise, they don't want to come on the walls. There you go. So basically, this is all you really need to do to win the first battle. You have to be really careful for the towers. It's the only thing that's scary in this fight. It is pretty much the only thing that's scary within the fight. But the good news is, since they're literally lining up right here, anytime we kick them, they'll probably fall off. And you can see the Plague Drones are very rarely getting hit. Ooh. They have put a tower there. Although, as soon as these, once these guys have died, like so, we'll move up the rest of my units and we'll be fine. Because nothing else can go on walls now. Um... Let's send Daniel in there. I have relative confidence he'll, he'll be completely fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to land these plague drones and charge into the Nurglings. You'll see why in a second. Interesting, they didn't do exactly what I thought they'd do. But that's fine. Yeah, they did the exact opposite of what I expected them to do there, which is fair enough. Because if you land them and then charge them in, normally they don't get stuck, but they still have gotten stuck. That's just classic AI. Classic Warhammer 3 things there. Yeah, sometimes it do be like that. And that's okay. Don't know why it didn't. Let's get everything in. I'm going to get rid of the Seekers, I've decided. It's not worth keeping. I'm probably going to get rid of the dogs as well. I just don't think I'm going to get the value from them. Oh my god, they're getting shot like crazy as well, these play drones. Yeah, this is nowhere near as clean as the other one. Jesus. Oh my god. Nurgle Towers. They're accurate AF. Run! Holy moly. Holy macaroni. It means, it'll mean that it'll take a lot longer as well. <laughs> Shame about the plague drones, but it is what it is. Started off so good. Started off so, so good. Does Daniel have any landmarks? I don't believe so. I generally don't think he does. It is really, really weird that he doesn't. Um, I'm still, I'm still shocked at the fact that the AI cheated as hard as they did. I am still shocked that they cheated as much as they did. I honestly didn't expect. I wouldn't have expected them to cheat as hard as that. Like I understand the AI gets cheats, but like ambushes free was not one of the cheats I expected. Free ambushes is not one of the things I expected there. Of that, I can't lie. Rich of Decay. Okay. War is Bane. Gotta beat me somehow, yeah. Alright, Corn Dedication. Fruit the Mage. Oh, wow, that's actually. From it is, is the best one by far. Is it cheese to then save this guy? Maybe it is.
Because that is just the trait that you want, for sure. So we know he's over here. Yeah, I think the diplomacy options that taking the port opens up is pretty heavily. Then again, if I do that, the only issue there is that I open myself up to being attacked by a lot more things. Right? Yay. I'm still trying to decide. Because I don't get a lot of bonuses towards making Norska like me. Just yet. I need a lot more levels until then. I think level 11, level 12, I'll actually have like plus 30. So you go undivided afterwards. It's hard to say, man. But then it'll, it'll completely bankroll most of my things. Plus you can trade it to Malice. Yeah, I'll laugh. Great minds think alike, buddy. Great minds think alike. Only issue is it'll still open up the thing. And then I suppose naturally we can progress towards the east and we'll have a better situation. Yeah, maybe it is better. Just going towards the cliffs. Because we know he's over here somewhere now. We know he's miles away. Mm -hmm. He's there. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to be intrigued to see as to what opens up from a diplomacy side of things. So 1.7k. Let's secure the non-aggression. It's brutal. Maybe you can do it a little bit later on because that hinders my recruitment. Maybe just selling this would be smarter instead of paying for the non-aggression. If I can get this port to level 2, I could put a military building in it and then trade it for, a for an, an agreement for like an alliance, right? Maybe that's the way to do it. Because that basically guarantees an alliance. Or near enough guarantees the alliance. So he's not inside of here. That garrison is strong enough for it to be fine. Yeah, more than happy with the settlements. With the uh, the fight here. That's all to resolve to get maximum experience. Let's get corn again. Feeling corny. Um, and I still got an item on you. I, do you know what I really wish? You could sell items. I'm not sure if that's... I'm not sure if everyone, anyone else agrees, but I wish you could sell items. I would be a big fan. Like in Three Kingdoms, you can sell items and ancillaries for diplomacy. I think it'd be really cool. Right, nice. So we've gotten you. So it opens up Varg as well. The only worry with Varg is they could randomly war deck me. There is a world where they randomly war declare on me. few hundred gold each. Yeah, but it's not worth it, is it, right? Like, this item, 500 for a blue item is c kind of crazy low, right? Like, that criminally low. That just seems... Oh, oh, also, I think Daniel should be able to use Ancillaries. Fair enough, no magical items, but Ancillaries is silly, you can't. Like, I, I don't know if that's just me, though. You can get, you can just, if I get what you mean. Yeah, because sometimes, like, you could, you could, like, really, really make a difference in a diplomacy trade if you're able to, uh, let me get rid of the Seekers now. I don't, I don't, I honestly don't think it's worth it. Money-wise, we're doing a lot better. Demon, let's get rid of as well. Honestly, the port does give us a lot of money. 200 a pop is pretty damn good for Daniel early game. Yeah, maybe the port is the way to do it. But my only worry is that Varg... There's like basically RNG now that Varg can water declare me. Let me check to see what you'll give me for this now. 3.7k. That's pretty solid, actually. That's pretty solid. So now, what I'm hoping is he goes into the Tower of Flies, because we need the experience from fighting the main guy. 
I don't think there's anything else from a diplomacy what? side of things no. that can help with. Hopefully Nagaron pulls him into wars he doesn't want to be in. I think turn 5 to 10. Varg loses to Thrag every time, but there is a chance that they'll declare war on me, right? There is um, probably like a 20-30% chance that we get declared war on by Varg right now. Hey, Elders. But yeah, although he does lose to Varg, like Throg beats Varg pretty much all the time, there's still a chance that they'll just randomly declare war on me, right? Okay, good. We did it. This world will burn. Uh, we have upgraded a torso. Uh, the spike collar is better, uh, purely because of the fact that it'll help me brawl against... Um, the Zinchian Lord, and it gives you the explosion. The explosion is really, really good. 25 uh, damage. Now, I'm almost certain you cannot reach. So what we're going to do is move forward here. Like so. And I'm going to move over here with you. And try and bait this guy to fight us then, if this is what he's going to do. Nine units. Some solid units in there as well, honestly. Spread it around the plagues, which I'm fine with, because honestly, Nurgle Corruption gives us growth. So I'm fine with that. I don't think I don't think anything here will have changed. Yeah, nothing else we can really look for to declare war on. I think there's a stalemate for Malice for like ten turns or so, so we'll see that. Hopefully this will bait him out. Obviously we're in ambush right now, so hopefully we'll, this will force the fight over here. As this will help a lot. That's a, This will be a lot of glory. We need 330 for the helmet. And then I'll probably start making it a little bit tankier. Because then I can just drain tank stuff, right? Getting rid of the demonettes makes a lot of sense in my eyes because... Nice, we actually got it. Um... Oh, it's honestly it's spirit leech this is a really easy fight but spirit leech is just a pain in the nuts to fight against wow that was a really low amount of glory because of the fact that it was this guy fighting it i would assume if it was my other army i'd have probably gotten a lot more so now we know that that guy's dead now malice is sort of holding around with his dread expansion yeah all the resolving that makes the most sense purely because of the fact that Spirit Leech is just going to be a pain in the nuts. Plus it's just a super duper easy fight. And then now we've been plagued as well. What's that giving us? Yeah, it's fine. Hell of Discord's actually really nice. So thankfully they, uh, we baited them in. Honestly, getting... Ooh, do you go into Children of Nurgle? I think you do, honestly. Well, they did nerf Children of Nurgle, didn't they? Um... There shouldn't be anybody in there. This should be my own settlement until the edge of the bridge. So we should be able to recruit more here because we're on the port. Uh, and uh, TDRM it is indeed, buddy. And then we'll force march with you. Uh, and we'll merge. Will we merge the Nurglings? Nah, not just yet. Double these. I think movement wise, we might be okay. Is this roaded? It is over here. It is right here. Oh, it is. I can see there's a path. Which means 50% uh, less consumption of movement, which is nice. Yeah, 50% less movement consumption, which is actually really big. And we're going to own the province, which is going to give us money, uh, give us the growth as well. Yeah, this does seem better, but it's just delaying us getting to the point where we can fight thingy. We are afloat with money. I only deal in Best thing about having the... Ooh, we're underneath this now. We're losing Kazuja Replenishment, so I'm going to have to be careful. How much do they have normally? So we are losing 10% physical resistance because we've lost... We've got low winds of magics. I'm going to have to... Annoyingly, I can't change into channeling this turn because I need to fight and attack the Tower of Flies. Brutal. 
People thought Dark Elves are the best economy. Nice, dude. Yeah, if you've got really good Winds of Magic, so you actually make quite a lot of money as um, a Zinch. You just got to control, like, where your winds are going to be. Playing down with the mods that make them pretty nuts. Just makes the fantasy better for me. Zodius, yeah, I respect that. Nice, the plague spreading is fine. Honestly, 4.6k gold would be so useful, but the 50 in growth from having the province is too much to pass up. And uh, we always want to make sure that we're being chased and we are followed. Are you death mage? You are, but we'll deal with you quickly. It should be fine. Honestly, having a death mage myself is probably fine too. I'm going to swap the units over now. We've uh, swapped over the plague as well. So the more I think about it, the more I'm like, Nurgling to dedication is probably pretty good. Nurgle dedication gives you plague bearers, I'd imagine, from tier two. But nah, plague bearers aren't as good as uh, Chaos Warriors of Corn. No way. No way, Jose. And TDM, how did you find the tutorial, buddy? So, we'll beat Chrome up. Should be fine. Spirit is not as bad as I'm kind of making it out to be. I'm being a bit of a drama queen. Uh, we'll need to start doing everything we can to buffer up our Winds of Magics before we start fighting a little bit more. I'm going to get my Demonic units just a little bit further back. Just as we move forward, they don't run in by themselves. I don't actually know if we move in. Does anybody know if a if you're having a reinforcing lord, and they literally don't do anything, and they're not even in the fight, do you still get experience for them? You'd assume so, right? You believe so? Yeah, it would make sense. Well, this is not that good against Nerglings. They're quite tanky. They do. Yeah, it makes sense. Lords can still level up. Yeah, it makes sense. Start putting pressure down here. Do the same over here. Let's get our Lord killed. Daniel's not the best of fighters in the world, but we'll see. Here's where I'd actually like to land first, and hopefully it does it properly. Because by landing, you're ve you're a lot less likely to get your unit stuck. So when I charge in behind here like this, you see how much more devastating that fl that charge was because I landed. If I if they flew in, all of them would be getting beaten up like crazy right now, hundred percent. By flying in, it, it enables us to. Do more damage and take less damage. I'm I'm pretty sure that's like just the way to do it. I am certain that is the way to do it. Nice, we've not been spirit leech too much. And we're getting our ward save um ticking up. Rose of Corn don't have magical attacks, but it should be fine. Now this will be between the their lord and my lord. My dad's stronger than your dad kind of situation at the moment. And my goodness, my dad is stronger. Get wrecked, nerd. Crom, you're getting wrecked, nerd. Ouch. Get crushed. Big. Red that Zinch dedication can get Daniel 200% spell intensity. That could be fun. Either that or corn dedication best, probably. Yeah, corn's really good. Uh, undivided dedication, as in like what you dedicate into, is the best. But corn early game, Nurgle mid game, Zinch late game, typically speaking. Daniel confirmed Daniel's battles. It yep confirmed. Hit her first. Wouldn't recommend sacking with the Empire at the moment. Um, certain Empire factions are okay. Like Volkmar is a good one. Volkmar is a good one. You don't have to deal with the Imperial authority stuff. Yeah, look at that. That's better. Corn glory there. That might have given us the helmet, or are we three off? Oh, we can get it because we've just got a quest to equip something. 
Let me just get the growth in there. Upgrade this one. Oh, this is big. This is actually really good, guys. Uh, so what I can do is just go into here. Equip that for a second. Come out of it. Complete the quest. Go back into it. And then put on the gore beast one. Big. And then now we want to go into getting armor. And the serpentine tail. So now the main focus is getting tankier. Um, is the main goal now. And we're going to be making our army a lot stronger as well at the same time. So the next one, we need two more levels to go endless match. And then you go into uh, into the top line to get respect to the north. I would see value in going respect to the north straight away, but uh, not for now. I'm not going to build anything in the Tower of Flies just yet. Let's have a look over here. Look, there's 22 and he doesn't even want a defensive alliance. It's crazy. 3.7k in there still. If I were to have upgraded the cliffs first, we could potentially put a military building in there. What do you think of the best chosen variants? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, I think the Sinesh chosen are really strong because they're heavily melee defensed, right? Let's have a look. Let's remind myself about all the chosen. I suppose they're similar to everything else. They have a physical resistance. I think uh, Colm ones have... I mean, the thing is, you don't really necessarily have chosen warriors to do damage. You just want them as a front line. Interesting, the Nurgle chosen have a lot more health. How big's the barrier? Ooh, 1,000. Zinch might be quite, pretty good because of magical attacks as well. Um, I, I guess it just depends what you're doing, really. As always, Zinch are really good if they can have the ability to go in and out, right? Uh, so Zinch in against armies that won't do a lot of damage, you can just do so much value. I think from a value pr perspective, I think Nurgle is probably really strong. Because uh, they have um, high melee defense and high HP. So probably either Nurgle or Korn or Zinch, depending on what you're fighting. Yeah, look at these, look at these health scourges though. These guys have insane melee defense. Insane. How do with the text? Yeah. It's an interesting question, in fairness. Nice, we're gonna have an army of twenty. Alright, so far this is looking alright. The RNG over here is the only thing that's remaining now. I am gonna do I wanna merge? If I merge now, we can save how much? 150? Then I'll be spending five, 600 of them. As long as I don't lose enough or lose many, we should be okay. Plus, we're getting the Blood Reaper coming in soon, which will give us movement speed as well. The Plagues and the Bloodletting is what we're looking for. Let me do one final check of the diplomacy screen just to make sure we're not doing anything silly. Varg still a bit of a um, can go either way right now. They might declare war and as if they do we'll have to secure uh, our coast by giving the settlement away. Like I said, there's like a 30, 30 odd percent chance that Varg will declare war at any time. Um, which is annoying but true. So there's that level of RNG that we may have to deal with. I think typically speaking when it comes to Daniel in general... There's a lot of RNG that's involved. I do think the port settlement taking it first makes the most sense. But now we know the AI can cheat with uh, teleport sense. I didn't know they could. Okay, nice. I haven't declared warners yet. Given his time towards uh, all warps thunder. Oh, reduction of Nurgle units, which is unfortunate because the only thing there is the Nurglings and the Plague Drone. If we got a corn RNG there, that would have been GG probably. That would have been that would have given us so much money. It's so nice if it did. Alright, let's attack this one. I'm going to fight it because I want to make sure that we're not losing any units. We have to ensure that we're not losing any units. I can't build anything just yet. We're building that. Then we're going to throw in this building in here to get some Chaos Warriors. We have to delay until we get Chaos Warriors before we start fighting Boris. This is no place. So let me check. So you still have only one settlement, which is surprising. Are you in here? 
I think Malice is AI gets delayed. I think Malice is AI specifically is delayed. Boris is gonna be tough. I think of everybody, Boris is the one person that will actually cause a bit of problems. Hey, Levy. So far, we're just going into uh, into buffing my corn units and going into corn glory, my friend. I'll oh, skip my turn. Thank goodness I didn't. Hey, Cram, good to see you, buddy. Showing mind and spirit is, after all, only an indirect way of accusing everyone else of their incompetence and stupidity. Interesting. Cram, thank you for your wisdom as always, and thank you for the 18 months. Appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. And Paradox, do you think, play, having played Daniel so much, do you think the demon units need a little push to be better? Do you want to consider that he seems crippling for demons? Oh yeah, 100%. I, I'll i put my hand up and say, I don't think demon units, typically speaking, are worth recruiting. I think, due to the nature of the way the game works, there is too many variants um, of, of leadership specifically. I mean, leadership in this game is very janky. I'll, I'll be honest. Leadership in this game is so unbelievably janky that you've got to be really careful. You really have to be careful with it. Because it's just so janky. Oh, dog wants attention again. Come here, baby. Oh, hold on, Bob. I might have to be a little bit careful, actually. Because they could just start chucking stuff into us. Ah, I was running. Oh, can't just sit. Just realised. If I do that, my dogs and these guys will get killed. Not the dog IRL, thankfully. This little cute puffer right here. Yeah, I think... There is a... Look at this. I have zero leadership right now. Attacked in the rear, damage sustained, flanked, other... Yeah, there's just so many ways of reducing your leadership. It's crazy. And the demonic units really suffer because of that. Oh, shoot. I'm really trolling here. I am really trolling right now. Yeah, by trying to save health as much as possible, I have, uh, in actual fact, lost HP, smiley face. That is a battlesy classic right there. By trying to be non-greedy, I've hindered myself more than I ever could have done otherwise. That is such a me thing to do. Do I have children in Nurgle? I do, so that's just sat casting. When the puppy wants attention, the puppy wants attention. Yeah, you got to give it to her. You can't deny the puffer of attention. Uh, we need to cast as well. We should better go back in here. How early can you make the Demon Prince a double water's engine? Uh, you need to go into Nurgle uh, very early, honestly. You, If you did uh, Serpentine Tail for Corn and then went straight into Nurgle, you'd get it very quickly. You'd get it insanely quickly. Oh my goodness. It's the double blue special, man. Goddamn blues. Goddamn blues. I'm trying to heal off of you, you buggers. Let me get some of the corn guys over. Sorry, I'm just trying to cuddle the doggo. While trying to play this one-handed. Definitely could have played that a lot better. Drag units through. Come on. Alright, the blues do nothing in melee, so... We'll heal at least a little bit from that. And we might get the Nurgling uh, glory points too. So I'd be very surprised if they do that much damage to us. And you might be surprised as well why I'm casting with my mage. It is just to get uh, Children of Nurgle healing. Yeah, Gore Feast, honestly, is really solid. It's just, I think, everything I'm going to fight is going to be relatively tanky. And I don't have the stat line just yet to be resilient towards most things. Hopefully, oh, that's a shame. I was going to say, hopefully we could have gotten, um, 
a little bit longer there, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. But the, the problem with double mortars engine, the problem that double mortars engine uh, will put you in is the majority of the things you'll fight early game is Zinch and Kislev, right? And going a double mortis engine doesn't work because you'll just get shot. You'll just get shot to absolute smithereens by Corsairs. It just doesn't work. It's unfortunate, but true. Um, so you can't really rely on double mortis engine. Plus it delays me getting towards uh, bloodletting if, if I do it like that too. Which I can't necessarily afford to do so. Right, one more until end of March. Such a hard enemy. Yep, I agree. Could go rents of visitations to do to start beating up Boris, but I don't think I'll have the magic for that. Oh, nice. We're actually getting wins of magic here. Wait, how come the AI had minus one, but we're getting plus five? Uh, five they had minus five, but we're getting plus five. Oh, I think it's over here they did. I think this province has additional wins. That would make sense. Um, if I did a double merge, do I think I need to merge my units is the question. Main hand is actually a damage increase, right? 25, 25, yep, it's a damage increase. Reduces my miscast as well, but I'm, I don't have any spells. So yeah, here's where you'd need to go into. Pestilent Decay is 110. Actually not that bad. Do you know what? So 220 and then 110 and you got double mortis. That's pretty fast, I won't lie. That is pretty fast. Heavy Armored Gauntlets is where you start getting a little bit more tanky, which is what we're looking for. That is what we're looking for. Corners and Mortis too. Yeah, it's a serpent tame tail. Every dedication has that. Every uh, every glory has serpentine tail as far as I'm aware. It is available to everybody. Interesting, the colossal mace. For Celeste, you'd assume there'd be more armor piercing. It is really weird that I believe one of the best melee weapons is actually in Zin uh, Zinch. The, yeah, this halberd is insane. I think it's... Mm, that's pretty strong. Nurgle has one that's really good as well, yeah. Nurgle has a couple of good weapons, in fairness. The bonking one is not too bad either. Two hater and a scholar? Yeah, true. I uh, but I do apologize to you guys that obviously I haven't been live in a long time. Uh, I have started a new job and as part of starting a new job, I'm just very tired a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm exhausted all the time now. I think it'll take me about two weeks, probably so another week I'll be, um, I'll be back to it, I think. Because I love streaming. I love speaking to you guys. I'm incredibly blessed to have the opportunity to, to speak to, to speak with you guys. You know, I truly am. So I appreciate everyone hanging out. Appreciate you guys taking the uh, the time out of your days to uh, to say hello. Uh, raise a physical resistance like thirty percent. Nah, I, I don't think it's a physical resistance perspective. It's not the fact that the damage mitigation isn't the problem. It's just the fact that if you flank them and like start messing around with them very quickly, they'll just die. Um. Yeah, money always got to be careful. Those stands are like us. Throg's liking us. Uh, let's check out Varg. Ooh, perfect. What? Crimson Skull, 178. I like that war on Crimson Skull. They're kind of far away. Hey, Kantash. Yeah, they're kind of far away and they're getting beaten up. So that's fine with me. Ah, it sucks that I can't attack Crimson Torture through them, but they'll probably want the they'll probably want a peace treaty soon. What now? And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 
Malice should start moving out next turn. He'll start moving down towards the Cliff of Beasts next turn. Selling out to the man, what happens to me? Now you're just the man, man. What are you like, Raziel? So as far as I'm aware, you're still in there. Yes, you are. One tick of this equals happy. I don't believe they can ambush me from this position. And my army's in a lot better situation. We're playing with fire having this guy around. If this guy gets spotted and then ambushed, I am screwed. But if they move towards me to then ambush, they can't, right? I mean, fence, knowing the AI, they probably bloody will, right? Knowing how the AI works sometimes. So now I need to figure out where they've gone. If I can see them in my vision, it'll be huge. Like, you force marches to me or anything like that. My only worry... Oh, my... This game's rigged. The game's rigged. This is perfect. I was just outside of them. Now I can get my mage in there in the fight too. Demon could get potent new appearances. Dude, you're telling me this now. This should be at the very beginning. Not even joking. This this little pop-up should come up at the very goddamn beginning of the campaign when you tell me to do something for a quest. Look, look equip any demon demonic gift. You gave me like four turns ago, and now you're telling me to telling me how it all works. It does not make any sense. All right, let me just move forward. Now we have a mage as well, which is huge. I actually could attack with the other guy. Uh, which I don't think is worth actually. Is this guy not involved? Can I, can I not get closer? Oh, there you go. It's working now. So this is a lot better now. This shouldn't be as brutal. We are actually in channeling stance. We're not being ambushed, which is good. So what I'm assuming is going to happen, right? If I was going to make an assumption. I'm attacking him. So he's going to wait until I get in position. And then he'll start running forward with his Furies and the General. And then all I need to do is just pick out, pick off all the Furies with my Blues and Pinks. And then just beat the crap out of Vindex in melee. And then all the Blues and the Spearmen will get crushed by his Nurgle magic. Nice. Uh, imagine fighting Dim's Chaos with a pompous hero stack. Yeah, that would be brutal. That would be brutal. But how's everyone's weekend been, by the way, guys? How have your guys' weekend been? Everyone uh, had a good weekend so far? Don't tell anyone, but I think Nurgle Dedication gets plus 20 Lord Recruit rank. I think most of them do. I think most dedications get, like, hefty amounts of plus Lord Recruit rank. But Undivided is the, one, is the best one overall. Because it allows you to recruit a ton of armies. Demonic instability should buff them with melee attack and speed or something. Get a punish like they go more aggressive than the fading and a lot of stuff. White Russian, I actually like that idea. That actually is a good idea. Then it's not as bad when you've got units that are that, that you know, when they're starting to um disintegrate. Because it would make perfect sense, right? If a demon knows it's going to be zooped back to the, you know, the, the Chaos Wastes or wherever it came from, it would naturally start fighting as hard as it could to avoid that happening, right? Yeah, I like that idea. This is the best thing about streaming. You guys come up with some such dope ideas a lot of the time. Alright. i got to be really careful with the Plague Drones because I think there's a very quick chance we could lose them. So, they're going to wait until my unit comes in. I can probably use Daniel's bait, actually. Where's my pinks? 
If I put my pinks both here, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm going to run up towards where their furies are and get them a little bit interested. Hello, you beautiful baldy bastard. <laughs> hey, Scott. Thanks for the 33 months of tier 2. Appreciate you, bud. Thank you for going above and beyond as always, my man. Ow. Goddamn blue fire is inch, man. Right, baiting out these screamers should be enough. Come back here, you coward! Oh, damn it. I thought I was going to be able to get it off. There we go. Bot not working again? No, my bot's not open. Thank you for the reminder. There we go. Let's bait out the AI by faking attacking. Faking the attack. Beautiful. That is how you kill him. Oh, no, there you go. It's working. God, blue fire evidence is savage, man, I'm telling you. Uh, so, the smartest thing for me to do, honestly, is just move forward. I beat them in melee by a long way. There's like... It's not even remotely close either, I don't think. Jesus. Damn, he's getting his ass kicked. If I'm running towards them like this, I'm using my pink to attack. I actually think we should be okay. Oh man, a rancid visitation is going to be disgusting here. Man, I took so much damage, it's crazy. Yeah, rancid visitation should be should go pretty hard here. In isolation, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna take a little bit of damage, but it should be okay. I think he'll struggle to do damage to us because of our stat line. Wait, how the hell do I have so much damage? Hey, hell, I'm complaining. I'm going to buff up all these guys. Oh my god, I missed buffing Daniel. That's not good. We're going to go with the Rancid Visitation and it should be... Uh, you're done, Zell. Well, he's ran away from it as if he knows it's going to happen. Accept it. Accept your fate. Honestly, it doesn't even matter anymore. Like, I'm not even joking. Casting it does nothing now. Actually, because he's just dead anyway. We'll just do some... Just do some... Uh, Fumes of Corruption. And I'm going to cast this on himself again. And then do another Fumes of Corruption. Bada bing, bada boom. Did you ever get anything Nurgle? I'd have loved to heal myself a little bit here. Would have been lovely, but... It is what it is, you know, sometimes. Yeah, this is the only problem about having mortal units. They actually have morale and run away from things. Their cowardice is disgusting, I know, but... What can you do? What can you do about humans, you know? If we lose the Nurgling, it's not the worst thing in the world, honestly. Uh, the only thing that will be alive is the mortal units... But I suspect we're probably going to chase down the majority of their model units. Ah, oh, this is where Seekers would go hard. This is where the Seekers would be useful. How fast are the Marauders? 35 speed to my 35. Now, if I go Daniel over here, we might be okay. There's the Bloodletters will be pretty quick. Yeah, they're only 38 though. If I can kill every single one of their units, then they won't. Then the army's just wiped, right? Hey, Talon, good to see you, lad. Which I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think we're gonna be able to do that. The chase unit's pretty good. They've routed off the map already. They have routed off the map. Here we go. Anything of this increased speed? No, it's just charge bonus. Plus, I'm just trying to give Daniel situations where he can actually heal. Yeah, get that gore feast in there, baby. I wish I had more consistent ways of healing, but my consistency will be this ma this Lord healing us through um, fleshy abundance. 
it's fine. Right, I'm happy with that. Yeah, we lost the Nurglings and the dogs ran straight away. That's fine with me. It's not obviously a unit we're dedicating towards either. I can remove some 50% of low armor damage very easily. Oh, really? I've tested it and I don't remember them doing that much damage, but I know they definitely do damage. Right, this, this will be a lot of glory as well, which is going to be huge. This is going to be a lot of glory. 4k experience is huge. 3.7k is huge. 257. That's massive. We're very close to bloodletting now. Very close. This is where having a secondary lord following us around as well. It makes a lot more sense too. And then we go endless match. And then now we're going towards uh, respect to the north. And then go into ramp matcher as well. Beautiful. Bloody beautiful. And then you move over here. You attack here. That's fine. I mean, surely we don't lose that many units. Yeah, I was going to say, if we lost any units, I'd be kind of surprised. We're getting veterancy of my army as well. I would quite like it if I can upgrade things like Warriors of Chaos can, but it makes sense that I can. -y. Nice, some heavy armored gloves. Yeah, I, I don't think... Losing this makes sense for this. Although, the Cloven Hoofs basically has the charge bonus and the activatable. Gives us speed and gives us a little bit of damage. Yeah, maybe it's okay, actually. And the cool thing about it is the more you go and build into one... Uh, some of the units here, the more your character is going to look like that dedication. Which is one thing they've done this is pretty damn cool. I like it a lot. Okay. This is actually pretty big. Milch Prince of one. So there's an army either in the Crystal Spires or in here. I'll have to I'll have to keep a keep an eye on that. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Demon's mm -mm. guess, I'd like to see the ability to scrape Plague Yeah, that'd be cool as well. And Toxic, thanks for followability. Yeah, it'd be cool if you could do to upgrade any of them, honestly. Just let me upgrade some of them, you know? I think that would go hard, actually. Having the ability to upload, upgrade demon units, that would go so hard. Like, if you get a Plague Bearer high enough, you can get the Exalted Plague Bearers from that. Yeah, that would go hard. Uh, do we want to merge here? Because we're probably going to have to... Going to probably have to. Depending on how far east I go, we'll see. Oh yeah, I need to rename them. If they die, they die though. Uh, Avatar, you know. They die in a fight, you know, due to careless actions by the streamer, you know. That's not on me, you know. Go control because of the garrison buildings, and now I can afford to go and control as well here. Uh, we will get the rebellion, but by going the control building in here, I think it'll um, curve out. Funny enough, corn units specifically were like the garrisons were were nerfed a lot, but they're still so good. Rebellion here is free money, which is nice. If I'm not mistaken, Daniel's going to start moving out very soon. Turn 10, I think he starts moving towards taking that province. It's so weird he doesn't do it straight away. I only deal um, commodities. Wealth and really want him to start declaring war and war and things. Vargo start liking us, Throg likes us. The second Throg declares war on somebody else, we will be right there with him. So, the discrepancy between Undivided Glory and Corn Glory. Uh, undivided Glory you gain through fighting settlements. You gain that and the dedication of the god as well at the same time. What I did beforehand was I had, like, a lot of heroes. One, two, three. So we're two levels off, three levels off getting fleshy abundance on this guy. Which will be a game changer. Malice is... Okay. 
Yeah, I'm almost certain now he'll start moving up. Like, he'll have to start moving now because it's just such a weird one that he just sits in his settlement for so long. I believe it's to stop Malice being very dominant as an AI. Because if he moves straight away, he would pretty much own the majority of the area as he has one of the best armies in the, in the surrounding area by a long way. Lawways, Blood Reavers are for Lords of Corn who died. So, ability to execute two Marauders for one Blood Reaver. That'd be cool too. Love that. In fairness, there's a lot of really cool things you could potentially be doing with them. So, it will be interesting to see what they do. Also, this would be an easier resolve. It delays uh, the building by a little bit, which sucks, but it is what it is. Um, 400 is not worth it, so let's go another more 20 glory. And then we now are only 70 away, so my assumption would be this settlement will give us that. Military presence of one, so it's either in... I think they're in the Port of Secrets, honestly. Yep, they're in the Port of Secrets. There is an army of one, so just a general in there. Okay, pinks and blues is a very annoying thing to find. Uh, towards the east, obviously, this is where the Minor Corn faction is. Bit of a shame we have no healing or availability of healing. All right, since this dogger is named, I can't auto-resolve this one. Um, we'll just have to wait and see how they play it because as long as I use the Plague Drones and like and subscribe, uh, Daniel correctly there, we should be fine. Should be okay. Guys, in your eyes, what's one of the most annoying things about Daniel specifically? What do you guys think is the most annoying thing about Daniel as a faction? What do you guys think? Hey, Club. Does the money plug? That sounds like you could take that in many, many different ways. Or a very open ended. Now I just made it sound sound wrong, honestly. Early game? Yeah, he's early game. Brutal. The way he recruits units, interesting. I've actually not heard many people say that. Uh, Woodwise, how so? What about his recruitment? Do you not like? Ah, shoot, this is this it's this settlement. His tech tree? He didn't have one chosen. So that's probably why. It makes sense. Do you know what? I actually don't think this area is that, hard, that bad to attack. But uh, normally this one's fine. I just don't remember if I'm actually safe from being shot here. Hey, Grackle, good to see you, buddy. Right. Wait, hold on. So I have put my units all there. And they deployed all their units there. Yeah, very confusing. Alright, I'll uh, take advantage of that situation. Let's go over here then. How am I? I'm exhausted because of work, but apart from that, I'm alright, man. Starting a new job is brutal. As there's just so much to learn. It's the reason I haven't streamed much recently. Right. I think this should be okay. If I'm not mistaken, they should struggle to shoot us. So we should be able to just absolutely batter them. And knock them all off. Because it doesn't matter about their barrier percentage. Their barrier health should not matter. Although, the way we're attacking, they're not knocking them off. Although, there you go. Nani? Think survive being thrown off? Okay, those guys didn't. That makes sense. Okay, there you go. How are they surviving? My dudes are like bouncing. Little bro out here bouncing. Also, yeah, you can see Gorfies doesn't work. So annoying. They may not have pink gum. Honestly, looking what I'm seeing here makes sense. Checks out, honestly. Honestly, Loki checks out right now. i got to run away from the pinks here. I'm going to try and get in as quick as I can. Uh, 
I need to avoid taking damage. If I'm on fire, it means I've been hit recently, which is not ideal. Now it's pretty much over because with uh, any time in a siege where you're able to get to the walls without them being annoying, huge. I'll fight here. There's not a chance in hell these Furies win this. Plague drones are so good. They do so much damage. And Furies have really, 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 really low HP per entity. So most of the time we'll probably one-shot them. Yeah, we, we killed a couple. I mean, if we wanted to do the map, we could. What's their health? 51. Yeah, it's not a lot at all. Like 120 HP per entity or something, something like that. Oh, Jesus, it takes so long to destroy walls. It's kind of wild. Honestly, at this point, it would have been worth me just sending a, a unit on the wall. But by doing that, it means... Nah, this, this has to be bugged. You're telling me these man, this many units? Is it only the boys at the front? They're struggling to hit the wall, it seems. Classic. Alright, let's take the walls, boys. Take the walls. To the walls, my friends! Ooh, do you know what would actually fix uh, the gate bug? I like them with the ladders. If you could set units not to climb ladders. Like, if there's a little toggle. Like, if I had a toggle button here, it was like, don't climb the ladders. That would honestly fix it. Because the problem is they go through ladders, man. Mm -mm. Needs to go super high to one action to unlock the units, then grow in the settlement. Yeah, that I agree. It takes a long time to get the glory dedication. Like, get enough glory to recruit certain units, and then you need the settlement to boot. You need uh, a very high tier settlement usually to do it. Now, that makes a lot of sense. I would uh, I would have been agreeing to that. As more military events than Tyrion, it bloody feels that way. Definitely feels that way at the moment. I'm trying to capture the gate normally. I'm hoping that most since most of my units are around the area, they'll just go through the gate instead. We'll see them. We shall see though. All right, I'm gonna get the gatehouse. Move through. So I'm assuming most of these units will try and go through the, the gate at the moment. But obviously this is going to be a nice British orderly queue. After you. But, uh, after you. No, after you. No, I, I, no, after you, I insist. The lovely jubbly. Nice civilized orderly queue there. You'd love to see that. As a British fella, love to see a good queue. There's one thing the English do well. That's queuing up. It is a conga line, isn't it? This is one of the annoying things. This is kind of what you're forced into. You kind of get forced into a conga line. Otherwise, your units will just bug up the walls. Thanks so to Unspaghetti the Code Oaks. I think... I don't think it's actually possible. I think... I mean, they might have said this because it's copium, but... I, I believe I remember hearing that the gate bug specifically is something they can't fix. Like, the way it's coded, it's not possible to fix. But then they might have just said that. It's an engine limitation. That's the words they used. Engine limitation. Guys, it's an engine limitation. You know, nothing, nothing can be done. It's an engine limitation. That's what they said. I remember it now. But honestly, if I was working on something and I couldn't figure it out, I would just say something like that. Such a such a solid answer. Such a good answer to be like, yeah, nothing could be done. Engine limit, engine limitation, you know. Wish I could wish we could figure it out, but we are limited by the engine. What's the actual gate bug? Basically, your units will glitch through the gate when attacking it, and on the same time, if you destroy the gate, your units will go up the walls instead of going through the gate. There's a bit of a double whammy there. A bit of a double whammy gate bug situation. Let me start cast. Can I cast into these guys already? 
Let's just start getting some children of Nurgle going. That's what I have. That's the current issue with the the gates at the moment. Those are the uh, the issues with the gates at the moment. Let me grab these uh, these corn warriors. Move them there. I am being split up right now. It's fine though. We're now in a situation where I'm very confident. The pinks are now isolated. We're moving into their settlement nicely. We're taking control of the middle capture point, which will hinder their leadership. And if we really wanted to, we could go and capture the other point as well. The reason I'm moving these guys into here first is because I'm just going to capture this. If you guys don't know, there's a lot of weird bugs with the barriers specifically, making it really awkward to attack. So just capture it. Why not first? Might as well just capture it, eh? And the same thing right here. Avoid the weirdness and just make it easy for yourself. Uh, plus we're getting some healing in there, which is nice. Ah, went down the wall. That's why that didn't work. Little bit of cheeky chill on the Nurgle again. Lovely jubbly. Nice. Yeah, the early game is definitely the interesting one. Definitely the interesting one. I'm still shocked, honestly, at the BS that happened early on. Like, the fact that the AI just gets a teleport for free is just so silly. Makes no sense. They kill them all. That's the intention. Um, we'll be fighting uh, Arkin and we'll be fighting uh, Malus at some point too. It's just, you've got to be smart with your early game. Well, that might give us bloodletting. Ooh, that might have given us bloodletting. And it has, folks. Big. So now we should be getting. Sheesh! We're getting the 50 blood for 50 growth and bloodletting right now. Damn. 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 Which works everywhere, I think. Works on every single every single settlement. Plus, it reduces our upkeep as well. It reduces our upkeep as well. Now, I am very tempted to go into Sparring Presence because I think the experience per turn is really nice, but everything else is trash, and I'd rather get Respect for the North. I'd rather secure the Respect of the North. Uh, we just need to get the planes of uh, the Port of Secrets to finish off this province. Let me just go through and make sure that we are doing the right things. Hagrid is not at war with anybody just yet. How much would we get for doing this? 1.4k does not seem enough. Hmm. Would it be smart to trade this settlement across to these guys? Keep them alive a little bit longer? Because I think next turn this will be taken. Just means Boris will come and take it. Why keep them alive? To be a distraction against Boris for a little bit longer. Because I am five turns away from guaranteeing Boris's demise. Because I get Chaos Warriors. Like, it's not even a remote, like, maybe. It's like a guarantee at that point, you know? That actually increases stat line. I don't hate that. That's like, without any uncertainty, he will die, kind of thing. No into spell resistance. I don't think... I guess they can get access into... Uh, Death Ross from Frost Mages. But I don't think Boris has one. Minions, bow the God. Join the 
If I'm not mistaken, folks, I don't believe Boris gets access to a Frost Mage. I think it's Tempest Magic. Am I right there, guys? Is it Tempest Magic that uh, Boris gets access to? I would love to be able to see where he is. And it also sucks that every military building... Ooh, we could put this in here. But it's three turns. If it was a one-turner, I'd do it. If it was a cheeky one-turner, I'd do it. My best bet is to fight Boris in a settlement. If I have no Chaos Warriors. If I'm fighting him in a settlement, it's pretty much guaranteed to win. My only issue right now is... I decay relatively soon with Bloodletting. So I need to be attacking a lot. So maybe I should have delayed my Bloodletting, honestly. Sword of the Antiheroes, nah. Sword of the Antiheroes, not bad. It's so weird that Sword of the Antiheroes is literally better than what um, Ulrika gets access to, and that's a unique item. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Oh, also, I completely forgot to do this. Knowledgeable does go hard, but I think Corn Corruption helps a lot as well, because it'll allow us to um, have better fighting stats in the province. I should have done this a lot sooner. Knowledgeable would be really good because I'd get access to things faster though. Yeah, we'll get knowledgeable. Because this guy will give us movement speed. Or more movement. Excuse me. Uh, we'll probably want to make... We'll fa force march over to the Port of Secrets. Ooh, I can't though. I can't... I can't justify force marching over because I might be teleport ambushed. My mage might be teleport ambushed. And by running away, like from the ambush, I lost the fight, right? But to... Ooh, peace. 2,000 is not enough. 3.3k is not enough. If I could have vassalized them, it might be worth it. A vassali vassalizing them might be worth it there, but... Because you can still get the province, right? If you vassalize them as demonic factions, you complete your uh, vassalization. Like, you you complete your provinces by doing that. Yeah, it could have been worth giving this element, honestly. Because Boris is in there. We know as a fact that Boris is in there. And we also know as a fact that Boris... We're going to get attacked next turn. I can't justify just in case he ambushes me. Uh, we're also going to merge these folks. And then chuck you in there to give us some more mobility. That's why Corden really goes hard too. Take the port. We'll level, we? we'll level 9 as well, so we're going to get as the aspiring claw, uh, the severed claw, which is what we need. He is going to declare war on us. The only problem we'll have is where does he go? Where will he go? He'll probably start moving out soon. I'm yeah, I'm shocked Malice hasn't started to attack the other guy. Shocked, I tell you. I do not think so. We are four turns away from getting Chaos Warriors of Corn. Boris is going to be really annoying. Boris Orp, I am told you are immortal. I yearn to be free. Tribal fear. The gods might compel me to kill. It's annoying they're not going to give me anything for that. Orson's disciple. Fear me. Not really an awful lot else I can do here, folks. We'll grab the Port of Secrets, which might open up a lot more. Boris will declare war on us this turn. Wait, he didn't declare war on us. Wait, did he declare... He didn't. It went past him, didn't it? I'm so confused. Some of the AIs just doesn't make any sense. 
Yeah, Warhammer 3 factions are first, right? Peace treaty? Ooh, if it's like... No, nah, it's not enough. It's not enough. Guess jump in the north by other slightly more aggressive nerds. Ah, demons nerds. That's a good question. Who did you... Archeon? No, Clan Ferric, interesting. No, it was Clan Ferric of all people to give him a visit. Wow, Bloodlodding's already inactive. That's so stupid. Is there any way from that position I can force match over? Oh my god, I can. That is so huge. It gives Bloodlodding for this guy as well. Big, big. This faction is now dead. A little bit into Nurgle would help a lot, actually. Brother Command's not too bad either. All right, now we've got the uh, we've got a lot of units. Big, back to getting growth in the settlements. Another thing of fifty again. You'd love to see that. That is so much free growth. Fifty growth is wild. Uh, we're gonna go into that, to that, and we're one away from plus your abundance. I am actually gonna take him off that, as a it costs money and b it just isn't worth becoming a please shoot me bot. Okay, now we've got the aspiring champions we're going to need. Upgrade the Crystal Spires. Let's get ourselves that. Plus, this level of um, Bloodletting allows us to get reduction time on global recruitment, which allows us to get the Chaos Warriors at any point. Which is what we're looking for. We'll go into uh, Nurgle Glory. Lovely to jubbly. This guy getting bloodletting is huge as well. I'm intrigued about Clan Ferric and why they've done that. Let me just check diplomacy now. We've got to be smart with our diplomacy moves now. So good. Mm -hmm. I could go. I, yes. Yo, Throbber, how are you doing, buddy? Thanks for the prime, man. Appreciate you. Norska. Always good to see you, lad. Back the, the back in the league What's days. Good liking, like and subscribe. Yeah, it's it's a meme. I thought it'd be a funny name. Oh man, I've met Akian already. That's huge. Okay, that's really good. We've met Akian already. The good old days. Good old days indeed, man. So that's going to double whammy like us. They're going to like the fact that we're rewarding them. They'll die next turn. Akian's a victory condition. I know. It's the long victory condition. But... The, the thing is, right, in the early stages of the game, uh, Daniel specifically is weaker than Archeon, 100%. Later on, Daniel is by far superior. And it's not that close either. He's a lot, lot, lot better. Because I can recruit things from a mile away. Like, I can recruit armies very quickly that I bespoke to whoever I'm fighting, right? Wow, tier 3 already. Really nice tier 3 push here. Save up for it if we can. We're going to be fighting against... I'm just shocked that Boris hasn't gone for me yet. If I take out his... If I take the Tower of Torment out, that might be the best one. But then who would I give that to? Wow, back back the lethal's on his way. Mad how much better I was on Lucid than you? I played in semi-professional games. Uh, in literal tournaments, I played as Lucian. So, that's Cap. And you know this. Um, yeah, I want to save money as much as I can here. Yeah, in my ESL UK debut, I played Lucian and absolutely smurfed. 
Uh, I could upgrade this settlement to tier th two and trade it. I only deal in two commodities: wealth and power. Here we go. Finally, you've declared war on somebody else for me. Boom! Free declare war. You'd love to see that because Malekith's bringing him into wars now, so I can build more diplomacy with him by doing that. By always declaring war on whoever he fights. Need to be capable of treaties. Yeah, true. But it'll get to the point where I'll be too strong. And Dave, I'm doing well. How are you, buddy? Hear me roar. I'm going to be intrigued to see what happens. Doesn't have our grief? No. Uh, he does not. He... Yeah, split stats for the AI is usually really, really bad. Uh, does Yuan Bo... Does Yuan Bo get it for the AI? I can't remember. Do we hard fight right now? So do it later? Yeah, 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 definitely. I've kind of perfected the early game, honestly. I'm very confident with the early game uh, with Daniel at the moment. I'm just intrigued at Boris's uh, behavior. I'm very intrigued at Boris's behavior here. I run it one place. Yeah, it makes sense. Dude, honestly, the AI having split stat would be so bad. It would not be good. Right, so. Where's where's little bro going? Oh, he's going towards the other guys. Okay. Hmm. I mean, the smart thing right now would honestly be to, to delay. To guarantee this, delaying is the smartest thing I can do. It's boring AF, but it's true. I mean, two turns and I get Warriors of Chaos? Like, that's crazy. And Ash, how are we doing? Thanks so much for the raid. I appreciate you. Hope you had a fantastic stream. Good to see you. Right. I am... Thinking about what to do here. But Ash, hope you had a good stream. Always good to see you. Mm -mm. Maybe save it for the next assault. Yeah, I'm just surprised at when... I'm just surprised Boris hasn't attacked me, because every single time he always does. Like, without fail, every time he does. Also, Ash, you only streamed... I think you started, like, at half six, didn't you? I hope everything's okay, because normally you stream a little bit longer than that. And Deepman, how are we doing? Is your internet better, lad? I hope your internet's better. This world will burn. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. And uh, Lucius, what do you mean, buddy? Man, I'm struggling. It's just like you got to roll with punches. Obviously, you got to make sure to roll with the punches. I'm just surprised what Boris is doing. I think we have to guarantee getting the. Ooh, the Sever Claws. We do need the Sever Claws pretty damn badly. I command. Ready. I'm Ready. Here. Supreme. I return. Look, dominate. Choose. Enter right, let's see who would give us the most money between um, Olaf and Clan Ferric. Yes, yes. Okay. To be honest, a tribe like does it indeed. Hey, Claybones, curious about something. If you farm Daniel's defeat trait long enough as Warriors of Chaos, could you force Kislev into wars with the rest of the other side factions? Yeah, I would imagine so. 
I guess it depends on how patient you are, my friend. I guess then it would purely depend upon your patience. Be really careful. Normally, it takes a long time for the AI to move up here. Kizzle's probably dead. Yeah, I definitely think Kizzle have a bit of a hard time right now. Kizzle have a bit of a hard time at the moment. I'm still surprised about the broken wheel here. It's so insane to me how Malice hasn't moved out yet. It's turn 13 and Malice hasn't started to go towards the, the west. Which has just given me the ability to keep the settlement for free. For a lot longer. My only worry is that we're getting a lot more money actually. He wants to kill me? Yeah, it definitely does feel like that. I think the smartest thing to do now is upgrade this to tier 2. And then put a military building in there. But that'll take quite a long time. Plus will delay me getting a lot more stuff. He's very docile. Yeah, I think probably the reason for it is I would imagine um, yeah, I would imagine they'd be a lot stronger. Like, Malice AI specifically, if he was more aggressive, in the area he'd probably steamroll. I'd have a hard time believing he wouldn't just steamroll everything. These guys want peace, but it depends on how much they're willing to give me. Nah. 115, 118's a joke. That's not worth keeping him alive. Need to top his area because he was could have been in the area. That is true, yeah. I just think he would go absolutely ham and kill everything if he was, was allowed to. Did we get anything good? Pestilent Decay? A double mortis engine might be worthwhile. Plus some a different HP. You want a random fact about squirrels? Okay, I'll give you one. Right. So. Let me just show you something. Right, so regarding squirrels. Uh, these little rats here, I think it's the eastern grey, grey squirrel, is not native to England, and it was introduced in the 19th century, and these little rats are killing red squirrels, because they carry certain, um, uh, what's the word, like certain plagues, I don't really know the terminology, plagues, they carry things on them that the red squirrels can't survive. Uh, and as you can see here, this, this squirrel right here is native to the UK. And these little rascals are killing them because they just have full of, they're full of crap that the red squirrels can't survive. And so gray squirrels being introduced in the 19th century has basically almost made, uh, the red squirrels become extinct. Um, so that's your fact for you. It is a long standing thing. I think for a long time, gray squirrels were like, I think people used to get paid to kill them. Uh, in the UK. I think Red Scrolls are making a comeback. Uh, but yeah, these little beautiful buggers. I love Red Scrolls, man. They're cute AF. These little cute buggers. Look at how cute they are, man. So yeah. That's a fact for you for the UK. And also... Oh, they're also called rodents. I thought like just the grey squirrels would be called rodents. But yeah, the red squirrels are really cute. Yeah, they've been in the UK for 10,000 years. And someone from North America, damn you. I suppose if you colonize a, a country, they probably won't like you too much. Maybe that was like the, the true plan all along. It wasn't throwing all the tea into the, the harbor. It was introducing gray squirrels to eventually kill out the majority of the um, uh, the native squirrel, squirrels to the UK. Maybe that was the true plan all along. And I have uh, just seen through it all. Grey Scrolls are also bigger. Yeah, Grey Scrolls would kick the butt of uh, the Red Scroll, the teeny tiny. So, I need to see if he's in here. He is. Effective flang long term, yeah, that's it. 
I'm googling it. I was just giving you a visual demonstration, Fred, you know? Also, good to see you, bud. I was just ensuring... Oh my god, Archeon's at war with him. This is goddamn perfect. Holy smokes. I've got a race Archeon now. Oh, this is gonna be fat dollar as well. Oh, this is perfect. Am I not expecting more money than that? Akin, you, you're, you're the literal ever chosen, and you're giving me 700 for declaring war on Boris. Like, dude, you are broke. I expected like 1,000. But no, no, no. Mr. Mister, I am broke over here. Also, the reduction of melee attack is going to be really bad for me here. The double bears should be fine. Let me think. Is there anything I need to do? Because um, I'm going to be fighting... We're going to be fighting Boris here. I think the double mortis engine kind of goes hard. Yeah, I think double mortis goes hard here. I was wondering if I'm smart with Daniel's movement. Plus getting a mage in here. Can I recruit anybody? No, I can't recruit anything. I think this armor should be good enough. It's just the fact that I've got the severed claw that's the important thing. So I'm going to hopefully fight Boris here. You know, shame your ancestors, my brethren. My name is Grumbrino, and I am the White Dwarf. The damage, Grum, brethren. By the layer, this shall be finished. Classic frog playing Warren Wolfric. Hopefully, he wins that, not gonna lie. Raccoon in Europe, kill it on sight. Yeah, most of them have rabies, right, Crickle? Grandma was discovered before the... This is no good, boys. I have no magic. Can I win this without magic? Oh my god, how many dervishes, Boris? This should be winnable without magic. Due to the fact how trash his army is. Nah, the Tsar Guard will be brutal. Right, guys, I just need to BRB. Just going to run some ads and go AFK. I shan't be long. Much love teaching everyone, you guys. I'll play some music as well. Bum, 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 bum. Where is it? There you go.
My fault and Stokes. I do apologize, I'm back. Had to drop the kids off at the pool, hope you understand. Quite the explosive show. Right, so. No magic. Loads of dervishes. Only four corsairs. Do you know what? I don't think we need magic. Because the risk is if I cancel this attack and retreat, he'll attack my other army. Uh, so this is the best way of doing it, I think. Hey, Johnny. You gave me the Zargars, I'll shred them. Yeah, agreed. I think it's the only thing obviously here is the scary thing is the Zargards, but as long as we're doing it, as long as we're preparing, preparing for it properly, it's fine. Then we could have retreated, or was it on March? I'm not 100% sure, but I might have put it in Force March Oaks just to bait it harder. Watch out for the War Bears and Boris himself. Honestly, they're not going to be that much of a problem. War Bear Riders are a lot squishier than I think people remember. I actually don't know 100% as to the expected behavior regarding Discovered. Does it mean the AI is going to aggress towards me? Does anybody know the answer to that? Being Discovered, is the AI going to move towards me? Because if, if so, this would be very, very nice. Okay, you got the doggos. And we got some corn warriors on this side just to make sure. Uh, these guys on this side. Zal the Bloodlord is going to be chilling there. Uh, let's grab and make that like guard mode. Ah, they're coming towards me. Ooh, having Deathbringer. I'm actually not sure that's fun. So double bear on this side is actually really good for me. I think sometimes flying over units, it baits them to chase you. Oh my god, please tell me I'm doing it. Oh my god, I think it does bait them. Holy moly, that's so stupid that it's just baiting the bears to come in here. Come on, you silly boys. Right, fair. I'm going to land on purpose. 80 speed to his 75. Yep, that's fine. Let's land. Bait him out. Trying to be as seductive as possible. Really learning from Slanesh here. Being the tasty little snack over this side. Absolute tasty snack right here. Kind of snack that these guys want. I can tell they're hungry. Low-key, we're in a vending machine right now. Absolute snack. Considered A1 on the vending machine right now. Big. These Covert Dervishes have uh, successfully redeemed me as a snack. Are these Wallbear Riders now? Big. Uh, let's grab these three. That's so disgusting. Grand champions. Big. I gotta be really careful with this side. Because he's gonna shard. He'll use his shard blade or whatever it's called. Yeah, the Warbow Rider is going to take a lot of damage here. Double Mortis engine right now. I'm just, I'm just conscious of the fact that he's got his Shard Blade. He hasn't used his effect yet. Just a little bit afraid of it. Who has Terror? Ah, yeah, Boris will, won't he? 
pressure up. Good. Let's pull Boris back now. Okay, there it is. There's the shard blade. Keep up the pressure. Pull back. Take advantage of the situation and move up this side. Oh my god, they're caught. His, his general's getting absolutely smoked right now. Get into these Zargards alongside the Blood Others. Actually, do you know what? I think the Blood Others will do terribly into them. Just trying to figure out how to uh, to maneuver here. So I'm struggling to get into the Corsairs, unfortunately. I actually don't think I need to be careful, too careful here. Some of the Zargards this side. Be careful here. Really not happy about this, but it is what it is. As we're getting shot to absolute smithereen here. My aspiring champion should not be at war with it. Should not be attacking them. That was a flank around by these boys. The terror is absolutely savage, man. Bears are dealt with. Which means I need to sit inside this combat now. Go for Boris there. Reposition from these guys, distract them. I don't mind this Blood Leather dying. I know it sounds bad, but I don't mind it. Good. Good. I really can't afford a mass route over here. And I really need Daniel inside of these guys here. Sucks that we're struggling to get over this side, but they should be okay. As long as we get the double mortis on this side. Initial charge there is huge. Melee buff is actually really tasty. It's going to help the aspiring champions out a lot. A lot of my units are getting really, really, really squishy here. Keep the momentum up. Dude, this is so unfortunate they're all routed on this side. They're really low ammunition. Really low ammunition right now. Which is good. That's what we want. Dude, what is happening to my army? Hey, focus up, focus up. Got to avoid the shots where possible. Pull you guys back because I need the balance of power right now. Clean up these Corsairs on this side. Spying Chambers did a fantastic job over here. No ammunition over this side. Look towards the victory conditions here, boys. Boris is really low. I needed my mage, man. I needed my mage. Why did I do this without my mage? Why did I do this without my mage? My aspiring champions are routing. It's really bad. Oh, this might be huge, actually. Please kill him with that bolt. Please kill him with that bolt. Please kill him with the bolt. Please kill him with the bolt. Please, with the bolt. Please be enough damage. Huge damage. God damn huge damage. That was the best thing I could have asked for. That's probably solidified it. Honestly, boys, that might have solidified it. That could have solidified it. They're really low ammunition now. And we can drain tank them, I think. Yeah, I, I, I think we've won this. I think we've won. Yeah, we've won. 100%. We've definitely won now. 100%. We can drain tank this side with a double mortis engine. Yeah, if Boris goes for that, he's just going to die, no? Like, no shot he can survive. Like, yeah, he's strong, but he's not that strong. Like, no way. Pull out of being shot real quick. Trying to avoid the hits. Beautiful. We evaded most of that. 
Trying to look to support the plague drones now. I really want them to keep alive. Big. Okay, that's Amulus bonus. Oh, okay. We got it. We got there in the end, boys. Got a little bit dicey in the end. I won't lie. We locked in, though. I stopped reading chat and locked in, you know. Hey, Jimbo. He does indeed. Yeah, it's just double mortar's engine can be disgusting when you're in situations to do so. Give me the Nurgle one. Hey, give me the Nurgle one. Close enough. Close enough. Right, we chase everything down now. We chase everything down. Okay, really nice fight, that one. Really nice fight. Happy with that. Kill these armored Corsars. Uh, let's kill a couple more of these. Reduce them below 20% and then they won't come back in the fight. Bro, because of this one guy was stuck in those armor core sides, they refused to attack the uh, Zargards. A little frustrating. Means their Zargards will recover. Kill the Corsairs. I think my army's too battered to... Uh, yeah, they're going to uh, they're gonna come back as well because of 21 out of 100. 20% of them need to uh, survive and then in a loss... For them, for the unit not to be killed. Just need to heal up a little bit more here. Getting availability of like things like Blade of Corn would have been really nice, but we locked it down. Plus, we did this without Chaos Warriors, which is the biggest dub, man. We did this without, um, yeah, magic. Which is also a big dub. Yeah, look how battered his army is. GG. Um, most of those, I think the Zargards will survive. I think the Armored Corsairs will survive as well, so we'll just attack them again. We do lose the 10% move, or the 15% movement, excuse me, which sucks. But yeah, the double mortis went so hard there. I don't know why he recruited so many, um, Divishers. If he recruited more Corsairs, that would have been lost. That was easily lost. Like, there's no way we would have survived that. If you did. Plague drones came in huge as well. Very happy with them. Very, very happy with them. The more we shudder our inner light, the more profound becomes the outer darkness. Jesus, that's deep. The more we study our inner light, the more profound becomes the outer darkness. I'm going to take the Nurgle. What do I need from for now? Nothing. Nurgles is a lot better now. Because we need plagues for terror to stop our mortal units from routing. Getting the Howling Citadel. Let me check if there's any uh, army still around. Because I need to know if there's an army, another army to, nearby. Because if I take the Howling Citadel, I have a lot of regiments around as well, I can remember. We have a lot of regiments around we can link to. Ah, the army was in channeling, but it was still, it paid off. Still paid off. I don't think we're going to get replenishment either from that. Leadership when fighting against Warriors of Chaos, Demons of Chaos, Chaos Warriors, and Norska. Well, that isn't the intention there. Corner Nurgle Glory, big. Uh, let me go ahead and check. So we've got bulleting now. We, we're going to want to go towards plagues now. That's what we're, uh, we're aiming for. It's a shame we didn't get enough. Uh, we didn't get experience uh, for the other lord. That'd have been huge, honestly. But we're maxed out with respect to the north, and we're going to get ramatched in next. Tail and everything. I'm happy with what we have. We got a good combination and a good hybrid of what we're uh, what we're using currently. Uh, we can probably take that with just Daniel himself. Nice. We've actually gotten Chaos Warriors now. Mate, we should have waited at least one turn. It was silly of us to do that, honestly. So there's no army, but my best understanding of how that works is they're going to take the Fort of Secrets. Name Jimbo. What do you want the movement perk? Yeah, we're going to have to grab him again, Jimbo. Do I remember? Let me check out... Uh, let me increase the tier of that. Let me check his balance of power. Yeah, he's got another army somewhere. 
He has another army somewhere. Okay, that's actually kind of worrying. Not that one. Not that one. There's another one somewhere. And the worry is that it's coming down this way. That's the worry right now. We'll see. I can heal the majority of my army up at least. The only annoying thing with Nurgle magic is you can you get very little uh, value at it until you start getting fleshy abundance and things like that. From a siege perspective, because you can't, you can't stream corruption stuff on walls. I think you can use the um, the explosive one. I think it can hit things on the walls if I'm not mistaken. But due to the fact that these are really short range and there's only three range units here, uh, I'm just going to use Daniel and the plague drones to push them off the wall again. But the only annoying thing is that he's not going to heal. Which is the only sad thing, but... I need to hide all my other units here. Man, these dogs need to be replaced, but they've been named. It might need to be a mercy killing, though. Could be a mercy killing, you never know. The lantern's not here. Um. Yeah, the towers are trash. I'm not worried about that. Honestly, the aspiring champions are giga chatted, so I'm not too worried about them. I think the damage they'll do is very low. 625 barrier, that's fine. Yeah, the only annoying thing is those Corsairs could shoot us over here. Worst law spell? Um, good question. Uh, probably the Eshin one. Yeah, Skaven stealth, uh, spells of stealth. Unbelievably garbage. I don't know. I don't even know why that's even as like. It is shocking how bad that spell is, or the School of Magic is. I think it's not even remotely close. Like there's bad, and then there's that. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I think I'm gonna struggle. I think Daniel. I think I'm gonna struggle to uh, to cheese this annoyingly. So we'll start moving in on this side. Annoying the AI is being really goddamn smart. How dare they? So what I'll do is pull what they call a bit of an Uno reverse card on them. And just kill, go and kill the f the isolated corsairs. Smiley face. That's all, we'll mate. I have been so gremlin mode this entire stream. I swear to God, I have been so gremlin mode while streaming today. Jeez, you forgot about that one. Yeah, I know, right. It's so bad. Let's go kill the isolated units. Uh, yeah, I just have to keep casting with you. Probably looks odd that I'm casting randomly. But it's with purpose, I promise. Lore of Stealth should be full utility. Yeah, I mean, it probably would be interesting if they made it really heavily utility. Uh, they'd probably, it'd probably be really cool, honestly. Also, where the hell did I get this Deathbringer? I generally don't remember. It's pretty strong. So now we're going to kill everything that's isolated. So your armored corsair, so your range is low. The spears are there, so you'll have anti large, but it's not going to be too scary. Actually, do you know that does look? That actually does look relatively scary. Stream of corruption because why not? 0.8% HP is freebie. You know what I mean? It is a freebie. We take those. Although eight seconds of combat gives us the equivalent, but. I got a lot of Winds of Magics to play with. Good news is, Winds of Magics equals the, it isn't it doesn't equal balance of power. Winds of Magic is not a direct correlation to balance of power. 
which is unlike isn't unlike what you'd think. Balance of power is um, only for like ammunition and stuff like that. Let's tear at those guys. Ones are all on the walls. We can probably just run at them. I'm kind of forced into doing this because I can't afford to take any losses which is annoying like any losses would kind of cripple us here honestly I'm going to have to run at these guys as well because we're just getting shot at by the tower I believe if I go ahead and grab you again. just keep casting everyone's going to race out towards them uh, if we can just move back over here, it'd be huge. Because it looks like we're forcing them back in. We're still destroying that gate there as well. And if I can try and interact and stop them from trying to continuously keep casting, that's huge. That would be absolutely huge. Uh, there are armor corsairs, dervishes, and that's armored corsairs as well. So the only person we need to shut down is these guys at the back. Hell, I'll take a double mortis in all day, every day. Oh, he's a double armor course, so I don't mind about them. Ooh, don't like you being on your own. Not vibing with that prospect, not gonna lie to you folks. God, it feels doggos, man. Let me just keep an eye on them. Oh, no. I think I've just trolled my plague drones, which is so bad. They're unironically the only thing in here that I'm gonna losing plague drones is really, really bad of me. That's okay. Uh, we did that on purpose because we now uh, reduced our uh, overall income. We increase our income, guys. That's, that was intentional. Really nice play there. Really good play by me there. Just trying to maximize the value from them. Good stuff. Good stuff. And that was actually devastating, but if we say it was worth it, it's worth it. It's the simple rule when making mistakes in video games, you know? It is the simple rule when making mistakes within video games. Just say it was worth it, and it becomes so. That should be... Wow, that's not even Amos Bonus. I am shooketh. Is one mistake if you don't claim it was the plan? True. Mate, Zinch must always look really smart. Because, like, if Zinch said to you that was intentional, you wouldn't know it wasn't intentional, right? Because that are playing 5 VHS on you. I am shocked I'm Lost Bonus hasn't kicked in yet. That is wild. It hasn't kicked in yet. Also, the rampage changes to make that rampage sooner is quite nice. There you go. Jesus. I was so, I was so surprised. Yeah, Daniel's a lot stronger now. Good. Well, it's going to save us a good amount of money, but Siege has become harder now. But most of the fights from now on... Aren't going to be um, siege battles. Will be um... yeah. The plague drones done well. They're so good in sieges. So good. Do you get anything like that, guys? Is there any type of flying unit that exists? What's your opinion of his strength since you started the experiment? Uh, I think Daniel's quite strong. I think uh, Daniel's a lot stronger of a legendary lord than people give him credit for. I think the problem with Daniel right now is that everyone remembers him on release of Warhammer Three when he was trash, right? I think that stuck to him for too long. I think him being really bad on release kind of stuck with him for a long time. I, I generally think that kind of like whole ethos about him being really bad kind of stuck with him. But he's a lot stronger than you think. Um, we'll go Corden because Corden settlements are going to be stronger. No higher power than I. 
Rat Marcher, which is big. What kind of units from here do we want? I think these are just going to be really good just to have, just in case I get sieged. My only worry is that, obviously, he's going to come from down here. We'll have to figure out what he does over here. But we've gotten ourselves in a really nice spot right now. Shame we have no better two-ender. Let me just check corn. Trophy collar is actually reasonably decent. Yeah, the two-ender is going to be decent. Yeah, the oversized heavy armor is really nice. The only time that you'd actually go into no uh, to go into corn further is this corn offering five is so good. Yeah, corn offering five is so unbelievably good. And let me uh, recruit another hero again. And call it, I believe you wanted it to be Jimbo. Jimbo the Warmonger. Classic Jimbo. Classic Jimbo in his warmongering ways. Ooh, we can actually get some... Chaos Warriors here. Damn, they're expensive. All right, we'll wait them. We'll wait. I, I leave. Speak. Right, has Malus started moving out? Wow, not yet. Jesus. So Throg loves us. Ooh, Throg seems to be losing against Wolfric. That's not I ideal. He has lost his capital, I think. Yeah, he has, but hopefully he recovers from that. Right. We need to make sure that we're uh, yoinking the burning model. Because Arkin loves the settlement. I feel like I need to recruit globally as well, just in case. Because since we're bloodletting, we get one turn uh, recruitment as well. We've now met Wolfric. My only worry now, have I just seen an army here? No, that's just his settlement. Okay, it's just showing us that they have settlements here. I don't know where they are now, right? I don't know what they could be doing. We're going to have to be a little bit careful. Not aggression. I think we honestly probably want to fight and take their settlements away. If you expand really, really wide with Daniel, you can get a really good economy because just buildings will give you a lot of money. Uh, brutal business is actually pretty good for me. There's an army somewhere. That, uh, Boris has an army somewhere. I need to figure out where it is. Once I've locked down where that army is, I'm going to feel a lot more confident. Got you spawned. You. To be honest, I'd run. To be honest, I'd be rather reading. Classic Norsecum. So Jimbo's going to go in the army. Nice. Alright, we're in a good spot now. I'm pretty happy with where we are. Your boy is pretty happy with where we are. All we got to do is just keep on um, being smart, making the right decisions, because very quickly this could turn bad, right? Very, very, very quickly this could turn very, very badly. So we'll just have to make sure that we're playing and doing the right things. As, yeah, this is still spooky zones. But I'm, overall, I'm pretty happy with the campaign, honestly. I think we've done a we've done a decent job at recovering. Um, yeah, we've done a decent job of recovering from earlier. I still can't believe what happened earlier, man. It was so scuffed. Right. Yeah, annoyingly, I wanted to try and find. How do you? How do you see? Give me a second, folks. Just checking something here. Just need to check something. Weird. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to skedaddle, I think, folks. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. So this obviously is me dipping my toes back into uh, playing uh, and streaming again. You know, we haven't streamed properly in a long time. 
uh, like six days or so because we're just trying to get back into things because we are um, we're fertile, we've got a full time job now. We do indeed have a full time job, and uh, yeah, that makes things a little bit more awkward regarding streaming time because I'm just exhausted all the time. Uh, but sometimes it do be like that. We're not a full time content creator anymore, so we've got to uh, we've got to do uh, yeah we're doing our job things. Right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna send you guys over to Saltic Hugs. He's a really cool guy. He is playing Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Nice. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. We're gonna be playing and continuing on with this campaign. Uh, much love to each and every one of you, beautiful, fine folks. Hope you have a fantastic morning, evening, night, wherever you may be in the world. Thank you very much for spending your time with me today. Hope you guys had a fantastic uh weekend hopefully i'll be live at least a couple times next week but we'll see we'll continue this on but hope you guys enjoyed make sure to like and subscribe on youtube as per the name suggests and on the twitch sides thank you for all the follows today thank you for being incredible uh we really do appreciate each and every one of you guys following the primes the subs the resubs you guys are the best say hi to Celtic hugs for me and uh, have a good rest of your morning evening night wherever you are in the world and pleasure as always i do appreciate you guys supporting and uh, yeah, I had great fun today, and I hope you did too. Goodbye for now. And yeah, guys on the tubers, much love to y'all. Take care of yourselves. Have a great one. All the best, boys. And yeah, appreciate it. <laughs>